What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So I'm gonna check out how WWE faked these iconic moments. Now, it happens. You know, there's always gonna be some type of trickery that they do for certain situations on television um to for one to keep the wrestlers and people involved safe and you know the best way to do it is to do certain things that make it look real but when you really know what's going on behind it, it's like oh so that's how they did that to pull that off with everyone being involved you know you know being operating in a safe manner so it's that's part of the wrestling business to create that illusion of what you're seeing is actually real but in actuality they're doing certain things to kind of you know make you believe that what's happening is real and and that's the incredible thing about wrestling being able to pull off something and in a way where it's like, how did they pull that off? It's like a, you know, a magic show of sorts, you know, and it, it takes a lot of moving pieces and parts to make things look, you know, really well, and especially in front of a live audience. It's different if it's pre-recorded, you know, you can get away with stuff, like especially during the pandemic era, they could get away with stuff. But in front of a live audience, making people believe what they're seeing is real, that's like really the tough part. So we're going to get into this one. Appreciate all love and support. Let's uh, check this out, man. WWE used to make things look real. Number 10, Triple H's car stunt. Oh, uh, yeah. Two arch rivals finally came to blows in the main event of the 2000 Classic. Survivor Series pay-per-view. Triple H and Stone Cold Steve Austin took part in an ODQ match, and the match had an inconclusive finish, and the match was ultimately rendered a no contest. WWE wanted the feud to continue, so they delivered a crazy yep. stunt to <laughs> close out the show. Austin would raise Triple H in I a car high in the air thanks to the use of a forklift. Then in a thrilling visual, Austin would release a lever which would then result in the game to come crashing down <laughs> to the ground. It was presented as if... When you really think about it, my man Austin committed fucking murder on live television, essentially. And when I was watching this as a kid, I was like, oh shit, he killed Triple H. But I didn't give a fuck because Triple H was an asshole and I love Stone Cold. So yeah, fuck you, Triple H. But that's crazy thinking about that. It, oh, love it. Take me back, man. <laughs> Austin had finally put an end to his ultimate foe. And the secret behind this Attitude Era stunt was kind of simple. It was in essence a pre-tape with numerous shots yeah. of Austin and Triple H being shot before the live portion of the match took place. Uh -huh. When Austin would drop the car, it won't come as a surprise to state that nobody was present in the car. Yeah. It was just a case of Austin dropping an empty vehicle to the ground. Whilst the initial reaction at the time to this stunt was somewhat positive, when Triple H showed up back on TV with no signs of serious yeah. injury, the illusion was quickly broken. Yeah, he had no injuries, no no neck brace, nothing, no broken bones. I was like, wait a minute, how? I thought he was dead, how did he survive? <laughs> Number 9, How the Undertaker Got Buried Alive with oh, the exception yeah. of the Boneyard match, the Buried Alive match hasn't been seen on WWE TV since 2010, and fans have been crying out for the popular match type to make a dramatic return. Every single incarnation of the Buried Alive match seen in WWE featured The Undertaker, and whilst it certainly became a trademark match for the Deadman, WWE likely kept using the Deadman in the match as he mm -hmm. knew how to deliver the stunt safely. The secret to the match was usually a trap door that the loser, which was usually The Undertaker, mm -hmm. would roll into at the last second. In 2003, at the annual Survivor Series event, The Undertaker would be buried alive at the hands of Kane and Vince McMahon, and in a huge production malfunction, WWE actively cut to a shot of The Undertaker using a shovel to move dead <laughs> and the trap door beneath him. But during the aforementioned 2003 Buried Alive match, it was made significantly safer thanks to Kane's involvement. When Kane interfered, he was able to direct traffic, and Kane was able to see when the dead man was safely out of the grave. When it was clear that the dead man was out of the grave, only then would Kane give permission for the dirt to be poured onto the grave. And once again, that is a dangerous spot because, I mean, all that dirt being poured on you, it could essentially crush you. You could die, suffocate to death. So, once again, it's the optical illusion of pulling something off in front of a live audience. They're like, how does he do this? Like, as a kid, and anytime I've seen a buried alive man, I'm like, how are they doing this? And then it makes sense that it's a trap door that can, you know, kind of move to the side. But it is still a very dangerous spot. Number eight, Phantom Rope Snap. <laughs> Now, thanks to modern day technology, it can be extremely hard for WWE to hide production secrets when they're delivered in front of a live audience. Uh -huh. This was the case in 2021 when Finn Balor's demon persona took on Roman Reigns at the Extreme Rules pay-per-view. The demon would be defeated by Universal Champion Reigns after the ring rope broke during a coup de grace attempt. 
Reigns was then able to capitalize and execute a spear for the victory. Now it turned out a WWE crew member who was located at ringside simply cut the rope. Thanks to the double. Yeah, and it was just like when you I remember watching this live, I was like, what the fuck happened? Because you didn't see, they purposely didn't show the the footage of a uh, personnel, WWE personnel cutting the rope. But then later on on social media, you saw people that were there, they recorded it. And I was like, oh, oh man, that that was one of them cases. It didn't look good in person. It looked different on camera because you didn't see who cut the rope. But in person, you could clearly see it was one of the production uh, individuals. WWE utilizing red lighting during the match, this crew member was barely visible to viewers watching at home. Unfortunately for WWE, numerous fans in attendance captured live footage of the trick being performed firsthand. Yeah. Number seven, that wasn't really milk. On one of the most celebrated segments mm -hmm. of 2001, this saw one Kurt too. Angle drive to the ring in a milk truck and use a hose to spray the alliance with milk. This was a parody of the infamous Stone Cold mm -hmm. Beer Truck segment, and the segment was just as strong and is still fondly remembered over 23 years later. Yeah. The secret to this popular segment was revealed by Angle himself on his podcast, and this is what the wrestling legend had to say. That's my number one moment in WWE or anywhere, any wrestling promotion I've been part of. The milk truck incident was the coolest thing in the world. I was so grateful that Brian Gerwitz came up with that idea. He copied Stone Cold's beer truck incident and it was excellent. Yeah, it worked. I really loved it and dousing down Stone Cold Steve Austin and Stephanie with milk was the coolest thing in the world. I mean, I had the whole alliance in that ring and I'm spraying them down with milk. Classic Angle moment. Angle continued by revealing it's actually food colored white water. Uh -huh. but they put food coloring in the water. But the milk jugs and cartons were real, but that's another story about the aeroplane ride that night. <laughs> Number six, how The Undertaker hanged Big Boss Man. WrestleMania 15 featured arguably one of the worst Hell in a Cell matches in WWE history. Yeah, it's definitely one of the worst, but it ain't the worst. <laughs> the Undertaker took on Big Boss Man in a Hell in a Cell match, and the match was a total dud, as it had zero chemistry and the fans could care less about the action. Yeah. Once the dead man defeated Big Boss Man, he would proceed to attach a noose to Boss Man's neck, and when the Hell in a Cell structure was raised to the ceiling, Big Boss Man went up with it. This looked to be the end of the Big Boss Man's yeah, character, he killed him. as the Undertaker <laughs> Theory had just ended his life on the biggest pay-per-view event of the year. Well, the secret to this stunt was that Boss Man had a harness, so he was perfectly safe. Uh -huh. It was hardly a surprise that fans failed to take the stunt seriously, as it was completely unrealistic yeah. and unnecessary. Number five, faking a devastating... Once again, <laughs> WWE is just known for just killing people on live television. <laughs> Car accident. One of the top feuds on WWE television in 2003 was between Kane and Shane McMahon. Mm -hmm. Kane had just unmasked in WWE, and when he hit Brutal a on Linda McMahon, yeah. the prodigal son sought revenge on the devil's favorite demon. This notable feud was filled with crazy Ooh. and ridiculous moments, and the most talked about stunt came during the build to their last man standing encounter. McMahon would trap Kane into a limo in the parking lot, then proceed uh -huh. to send the limo helplessly into a truck. This looked impressive on TV at the yeah. time, yet certain fans could easily spot how the trick was done. The limo crash would be pre-taped, and WWE made this apparent thanks to showing a shot of the limo with all its windows intact moments before impact. This broke the illusion as mm -hmm. Kane has caused mayhem and had smashed yeah. through the windows just minutes before the event. When you really think about it, it's like, wait, he just, he smashed. So the window should have just been smashed. And then you drive the car. Potential <laughs> crash. Number four, setting their opponent on fire. Mm -hmm. When the COVID-19 pandemic changed the way WWE presented their product, they were able to experiment with oh, different styles was of awful. matches. The During zombies. the feud between The Fiend and Randy Orton, oh. the two would embark in a Firefly Inferno match at the 2020 TLC event, and in the match, Orton would successfully be victorious after The Fiend was engulfed in flames. Now, it was easy to assume that this was a stunt performer, but it was legitimately Bray Wyatt performing the stunt. That's the crazy, The was protected bro. thanks to numerous layers of clothing combined with fireproof gel. But this was in the end of the Rest stunt show at the Bray, 2020 man. TLC, however, as once The Fiend was hit with a trademark RKO, Orton then poured gasoline all over him, and The Fiend was set alight as the pay-per-view came to an end with The Fiend burning alive. It was a dummy. The version of The Fiend that Orton set on fire was simply a dummy version of The Yeah, you could tell. WWE achieved this by pre-taping elements of the special matchup, meaning they could do multiple takes to make sure it looked as legitimate as possible. Number three. Him actually getting set on fire was crazy work, just in itself. But you could tell when you watched the match, I was like, oh, he's that's a dummy. You could tell. So, How did The Undertaker escape a flamed casket? 
The acclaimed feud between The Undertaker and Kane was taken to the next level at the 1998 Royal Rumble, as Kane set The Undertaker alight whilst he was trapped in a casket. This was an incredible visual, and the image of Kane and Paul Bearer standing next to an engulfed casket is often seen in WWE video packages. <laughs> Once the again, murder! had to be carefully delivered, as of course, The Undertaker had to be physically out of harm's way before the casket was set alight. The secret to this trick was similar to the Burned Alive match, as when The Undertaker was in the casket, he was able to roll out to the side, thanks to a trap door inside the casket itself, and mm -hmm. safely get under the ring. Number two, that was yeah. a real beer. One of the most exciting elements of the Attitude Era was never knowing what Stone Cold Steve Austin was going to do. One of Austin's most iconic moments when he gave the corporation a beer bath, and the secret behind the beer has puzzled fans for years, mm -hmm. but Austin himself has finally revealed the hack used to pull off the trick. Speaking on the Brewbound podcast, Austin revealed, Well, you know, living on the road back in those days was a pretty wild time. A lot of times you got created the day of. I remember arriving in the building, Vince or somebody is saying, hey man, you're gonna drive a beer truck into the arena and hose down the rock. I bumped so the ring with it, crazy. And the first 30 gallons that came out was actual beer, and then it turned into water. Oh, you wow. Up, you hear all crazy shit that they maybe do, whether it was them both. Damn, so the, the first 30 gallons was actual beer. So when you really, bro, that beer getting in your eyes and stuff, I know that stings. And then the last, everything else was just water. But that was, that's crazy. These are beer trucks, driving cement trucks, filling in a Corvette with cement, just totaling a brand new Corvette, you know? And number one, how did the WWE bury Paul Bearer in cement? Mm -hmm. Even though the main event of the 2004 Great American Bash received negative reviews, there was no denying that the trick of Paul Bearer being buried alive in cement looked incredibly realistic. Yeah. In relation to how WWE pulled this off and kept the legendary manager safe, Bearer would expose the secret on a shoot interview. According to Bearer, the concrete was mixed with oatmeal, and every time that Bearer was seen in the crypt, it was pre-taped from earlier in the day. Bear would have a button by his hand which would communicate to WWE production team. That's if he needed medical assistance and they needed uh... to get him out quick. Bear would take the concrete mixture up to his nose and that was the end of the pre-tape. WWE would then use a suction machine to free Bearer, but in a crazy turn of events, the suction machine malfunctioned, of course. leaving Bearer trapped. WWE had to open the door to the crypt which resulted in Bearer falling out. In relation to the live portion of the stunt, this was done with a localite stunt performer who was an expert at this type of Hollywood stunt. But there you have it, folks. Incredible tricks. That's crazy, bro. And, you know, when you think about it, them doing it live, people are not up on the ramp area. They're not that close. So you can have a stunt double that looks like Paul Bear in, you know, kind of back up on the ramp area. No one's going to really pay attention to it too too well you know what i'm saying it's it's one of those camera trickery but also having stunt people that know what they're doing and it's a dangerous spot still you know what i'm saying even when them pre-taping it it's still kind of dangerous because anything could go wrong so uh it's just one of those things where doing your wrestling show especially you know as big as wwe it takes time and and years of practice and getting things right to make the illusion of what's happening to in certain segments in like you know certain parts of the match or these gimmick matches seem more real than they actually are so comment down below let me know what's your favorite gimmick match in wwe history whether it's a hell in a cell money in a bank a buried alive match let me know what's your favorite gimmick match in wwe history i appreciate all the love support road to 150k appreciate y'all kicking with me see you next one peace